Stay free. See it first on Rumble. Is it true that in every single conceivable measurable metric, if you have like saunas, it's good for you? Like heart disease, it's good for respiratory conditions, it's good for cancer. Is that true or am I, is that fake news? <laughs> it's almost true uh, with, this, with the exception of cancer that hasn't been shown yet. But uh, as you mentioned, you know, thermal stress, the sauna is a type of th thermal stress. You're elevating your core body temperature, much like exercise. When you exercise, you elevate your core body temperature. You sweat to try to cool yourself down. Well, saunas, you know, they're, they're a type of stress. They're called intermittent stress. And this is the same type of stress that exercise is. It's a good type of stress where you're stressing your body, but your body has evolved these stress responses that are beneficial to that stress. I mean, humans were, you know, throughout evolution, we were exposed to intermittent stress. We were, you know, hunting, gathering, we were running fast to get prey, um, you know, that we went through periods of food scarcity, right? Like we, these are these are types of intermittent stress and our, our bodies have evolved pathways, genes that are turned on that sort of respond to that, that are not only beneficial in that moment, but they have a net beneficial effect, anti-inflammatory responses, antioxidant responses that are active much longer than the intermittent type of, you know, stress period that we sort of engaged in. And so, yes, sauna use has been, in, it's you know, it's a, um, a modality, another modality, I, I argue, another modality of basically healthful types of behaviors like exercise, like meditation, like good sleep, all these things that good diet, you know, the, these, these are lifestyle factors that are known to improve health. And I think sauna should be one of those factors because there is just mounting evidence that the sauna is associated with a 50% lower cardiovascular-related mortality. Um, it's associated with a 40% lower what's called all-cause mortality, basically dying from all non-accidental causes. As you mentioned, respiratory disease as well. It affects the lungs. Alzheimer's disease, a 66% lower chance of getting Alzheimer's disease. So many different benefits that have been sort of um, over the years now, we're, we're getting more evidence that the sauna is beneficial. It's extraordinary, it seems to me, Doctor, that by replicating the conditions by which we long lived deep in our forgotten history, we can engage dormant forces and that one of the hallmarks of our time appears to be this disembodying way of life that we increasingly stare sedentary at screens glazed and lost and not connected to our bodies unable to have healthy sex eat healthy food move nimbly through trees it's like we've forgotten who we are do, do you believe that that's part of what it is that it replicates the conditions for which we are evolved and indeed is that why it even uh, like exercise sauna and and can i ask cold therapy uh, is that why they affect your mental health positively too i do think so i think that because we have been able to measure you know, genetic pathways, molecular pathways, molecules that are increasing in our body in response to sauna use, in response to exercise, in response to cold exposure, we're able to, to, to measure those molecules and genes and go, look, these are beneficial molecules. They're anti-inflammatory molecules. They're things that are blunting chronic inflammation, which is a byproduct of being sedentary, of being overweight, obese, of eating a refined you know, carbohydrate, a processed food, rich diet. And we're able to then also look at these genes. These are, these are genes that are, you know, heat shock proteins for one, they, they respond to heat, but they also respond to just stress in general. So you can actually activate heat shock proteins, obviously from sauna, which would increase, you know, your, your core body temperature and exercise, but cold exposure also increases those. And they're basically, they have a beneficial effect in your, in your, in your brain, also in muscle mass, they're prevent, preserving muscle mass, preventing atrophy. And, and so, yes, I do think that actually the intermittent type of stress, you have to kind of be uncomfortable for a little bit. And that, that uncomfortable feeling um, is essential for the response, which is beneficial. And this, this term is somewhat um, 
Sometimes it's called to, referred to as what's called hormesis. So essentially, you expose your body to a little bit of stress. And sometimes that stress could be in the form of physical activity or, or temperature stress, or it can be plant polyphenols. You can, you know, turmeric for one. Um, you know, th these are bioactive compounds that are found in plants that they're a little bit toxic, um, but, but only when they're like in a really, 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 really high dose. So like, for example, they're toxic to insects or fungus. And that's kind of how, why plants evolve these, these compounds compounds is to, to sort of ward them off. But when humans ingest them, it has the same, a similar response. It activates these beneficial anti-inflammatory, antioxidant pathways and in, in our brain and in our body that are, that are improving the way we age and improving the way we feel, the way we think. And, and it's interesting because um, I actually became so interested in the sauna when I was a graduate student getting my PhD. I was in the lab failed experiment after failed experiment. I mean, let me tell you, there's like 10 more failed experiments than successful ones as a scientist. I was very stressed out. I mean, it was very overwhelming. And I started using the sauna every morning before I went into the lab to do my experiments. And it was like night and day difference. I knew something was happening in my brain. I was able to handle stress better. I was able to handle the anxiety of, you know, graduate school better. And so I started looking into this research and like, there's something going on in the brain. Like people usually think about sauna, they think about sweating out toxins, which is true. But um, I was very interested in, um, in the profound effects that it was having on, on my mental health. And um, that was sort of the start of my interest in saunas. This was back in like 20, 2010. And since then, there has been um, quite a bit of literature showing that sauna is beneficial on the brain. So um, work by Dr. Charles Raison, you know, this was back in um, about 2016, he published a paper with people that have major depressive disorder, and they were sort of um, resistant to, to typical treatment. So like SSRI, serotonin reuptake inhibitors is a very common one. And so he took these, these individuals and separated them into two groups. So one group got uh, what's called whole body hyperthermia, which is kind of like a sauna. So there, there's a machine. It's an infrared type of sauna where you basically, you know, are, are warming the person up by, via infrared radiation. And um, so they were they were getting that active treatment. And then there was a placebo group that was getting just a little bit warmer, like enough to think they were getting the treatment, but it wasn't. And the people that were getting the actual treatment, they actually were in a feverish state. So their their core body temperature, they, I mean, they were at about 101.3 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little, a little bit feverish. So they were really getting hot. And after just one treatment, they had an antidepressant effect that was not found in the placebo group that lasted six weeks. And this was sort of the 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 instigation of now what is a you know a field of research um, that I I'm involved in um, Dr Ashley Mason at UCSF is now taking that she's taken that study and she said okay well that was one session what if we take depressed people and give them like four or eight sessions what kind of effect will that have and so um, the data is very promising. It's not published yet. I can't talk too many details about it, but it's extremely promising. And it's so exciting because what we have here is a potential modality for you know, mood disorders, anxiety, um, much more work needs to be done. But the reality is, is that, you know, sauna does mimic in many ways, moderate cardiovascular intensity. A lot of the physiological response is similar. And you know, it takes a certain amount of commitment to go for a run, to get on a bike, you know, get on your Peloton, you know, whatever, whatever it is that's going to get your heart rate, you know, up and you're, you're, you're sweating, you know. Um, and a lot of times people that are depressed, it is, it is challenging for them to try to take that initial step. But when you tell them to get into a sauna, it kind of feels like, you know, well, I just have to step into this. Yes, it's uncomfortable. It gets uncomfortable when you get hot and you do have to sort of bear through that uncomfort, but it's easier to step into a sauna than to start going for a jog, if, especially if you've never done that, You're, you've been sedentary. <clears throat> and so um, not to mention people that are disabled, there are a variety of people that can't go for a run. They can't get on a bike and, 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 you know, cycle. And so, um, you know, this is, this is a potential new way to improve, not only improve, you know, mood and, and, and basically mental health, but the side effects are reduced cardiovascular disease. They're, you know, reduced respiratory disease, reduced Alzheimer's disease risk. I mean, it's, 
beneficial side effects. So I'm so excited about this area of research. And we have known for a while that exercise is also a potential treatment, not just, I wouldn't, I don't want to say potential. I mean, it really is, it could be a treatment for depression. Study after study has come out. In fact, a new one just came out comparing head to head comparison, people getting antidepressants versus people getting getting um, running therapy. And it, it, you know, the running therapy is, is, is basically working just as good as the antidepressants. Mm 